Hey, it's that Deadeye guy. Let's talk about PUBG. Player Unknown's Battleground is a first or third person action multiplayer shooter. It pits 100 players against one another in singles, duos, or squads of three or four on a single island. The match starts with everyone cramped into a C-130 as it takes a random path across the island. You're free to jump out at any time, pull your chute, and pick where you want to go. As you land, you and everyone else are completely unarmed. Frantically scouring buildings for weapons and equipment is a key part of the early game, especially when other players are nearby. Once basic gear is acquired, focus then turns to the play zone. A circle is placed randomly on the map, and you'll have to get inside that circle after a set amount of time. Once the clock runs down, a heavenly reaching blue wall starts to close in to the edge of that circle. If you're caught outside of it, you will slowly start to take damage until death. The amount of damage dealt increases exponentially as the game goes on. The circles get smaller and smaller, and the engagements with other players become more desperate as you vie for the increasingly limited amount of space and cover. This continues until the very last circle, where there is only one person or squad left standing, and they get the ever-elusive chicken dinner for being number one. The principles of the game are great, though not unique. King of the Hill style games and modes have been around for quite some time. PUBG meshes slightly more realistic mechanics and gun feel with the array of weaponry that is available, and shots take a much harder toll than they would in more arena style shooters. That's not to say the rounds on contact do realistic damage as they do in, say, Squad or Arma. It still takes a laughable amount of shots to kill an opponent, and even headshots don't instantly kill people in Squad or Duo games. So there's certainly some arcadey mechanics that they've left in as to not attract only tactical shooter purists. PUBG is early access, and it most definitely shows. You can find countless videos on YouTube and the game's subreddit that put the jankiness of the game on full display. You'll find buggy snippets of players being stuck in crevices, vehicles defying all laws of physics, rounds not hitting where the weapon is being aimed, and all sorts of other things that are indicative of a very unpolished game. Hell, even trying to land on buildings from the first jump out of the plane can be a risky affair thanks to bugs. This is all stuff that we've come to expect from games that haven't been fully launched yet, but PUBG has record numbers of active players. This game is insanely popular. Why? I play PUBG regularly, both solo and with friends. A key mechanic that keeps drawing me back is the RNG of the equipment drops. Each game you play is unique. As you rummage through different compounds, you'll find a variety of gear that you'll just have to make do with. Sometimes you'll find a rifle and a scope early, giving you an advantage at distance. Sometimes you'll get stuck with no body armor and nothing but a micro Uzi to defend yourself with. This roll of the dice, this what will I have to use to survive this time, is oddly addicting. And even if I die in a frustrating or stupid way, there's always a little piece of me that wants to start up another game in the hopes that I'll have better luck. This isn't to say that this game relies heavily on random chance to determine who is the winner. I've won games where I was stuck with pretty low tier equipment, and I've lost games where I was kitted out with everything I could possibly ask for before the second circle even dropped. There is absolutely luck involved with gameplay, especially when it comes to circle placement, but it never seems too daunting or impossible to overcome. There's always a chance you could find a way to pull through getting across that open field on foot, or acing a looming sniper when you don't even have a scope. Raw FPS ability doesn't have as heavy an influence on the outcome of each round as in many other shooters. Obviously you can't be awful and expect to kill other players, but it doesn't require skill on par with precision tactical or arena shooters. This has been a major selling point for folks who don't care to dive into games like CSGO because of the high skill floor required to play it competitively. Casual FPS players can do just fine in PUBG. Sure, they won't be dropping people on a dime from several hundred yards, but they can make up for the average mechanical skill with positioning, equipment, and decision making. This greatly broadens the potential player base. The jankiness I spoke about before contributes to the unique experience each game aspect as well. In addition to the drops, you'll also never know when something crazy involving bugs or the game's physics engine is going to happen. It's given PUBG sort of an odd charm, and a lot of the player base don't seem to care that much about the mechanical problems. I can't even be mad that gently touching my squadmate's vehicle with my own sent my small sedan flying through the air in a ball of fire, killing both me and one of my partners. We lost, sure, but it was hilarious and entertaining, and it takes just a few moments to start up another game. Another draw that continues to pull me in is the satisfaction of winning. Winning always feels good, especially when competing against other players, but it feels particularly good in PUBG. Out of a hundred people, you were the one that survived through your own guile and skill. 
As the game presses on and the remaining players continuously move and improve position in hopes that they'll be in that last circle with those remaining few competing for the chicken dinner. There are a few games out there that can send you into a borderline heart racing panic that occurs when you realize it's just you and a couple other people left. The lust for that number one spot can be very powerful. Streamers and YouTubers have also played a big part of propping up the popularity of PUBG. Getting entertaining people to play your game and provide free advertising can be huge, regardless if your game is good or not. In this case, the game is actually quite fun. In others, not so much. Go play Five Nights at Freddy's and tell me that game would have ever gotten the popularity it has if it hadn't been for certain YouTubers. There's PUBG streamers all over Twitch, and you probably know the big ones even if you aren't a serious player of the game. All of these videos and streams help prod people into taking the dive and saying, you know what, I think I'd be good at this game, let's give it a try. They are also very beneficial in helping the player base stay alive and interested. This game absolutely relies on having a heavy player base. Having a small army of popular streamers can entertain people with PUBG and will ensure that the hundreds of thousands of players keep coming back. As frustrating as PUBG can be at times, there's no denying that the game is addictively fun to play. The numbers don't lie, and as the developer continues to polish and add new content, I believe the game will continue to top the Steam charts for the time being. Whether it can stick with it for the long haul or not will be an interesting story to keep tabs on. For the moment, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds is a staple in my current gaming lineup, and will remain so until a better designed game that scratches the same itch comes along. Thanks for watching. If you like content like this, why not like, comment, and subscribe? Until next time.